Hey there YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another video. Looky what was sitting on my doorstep when I got home today. About just in time too. Uh, so this is actually a uh, one of these like mini micro uh, Windows PCs that they're selling. And I reviewed a Camry like way back. It's like at least been a year, if not more. And uh, one of the things that I commented at the time was it was a little bit pricey for what it is. I don't know exactly off the top of my head what the price on this is. I know a uh, lower end model of this was, I saw on a few different sites, like about one, almost 150, I think, price range, which is, these are getting down in price. That's kind of insane. This one is the higher end model, however. Anyway, I was contacted by the company DreamQuest. Uh, and they said that they had a mini PC for me to review, and I like PCs. What can I say? This one has a slightly more updated Intel Celeron processor, the N5105, compared to the Camry that I uh, reviewed. And this guy has 16 gigabytes of RAM and 512 gigabyte SSD. So that should be a markable upgrade. And hopefully, as long as it stays under, I, I believe the Camry, when I reviewed it, which given it's been a while, I think it was like about... 300 ish if this can be under that price point i think that would set this up uh, to be a pretty good deal uh, depending on how it works of course this uh, specifically is the dream quest yeah, there you go dream quest pro and you can see actually yeah they show you the back of the uh, unit and the front interesting in the top and on the bottom uh, we can see the dimensions 139 by 139 by 29.5 millimeters. That means almost nothing to me. Uh, okay, yeah, I was going to say, I said, I swear they said they sent me the 16 gig version. Here it says RAM, RAM 8 gigs, and they just put a sticker underneath it to correct and say that it is the 16 gig version. So good. Runs off of 12 volts at 3 amps, so that's like, what, 36 watts? And yeah, so anyway, let's just get into this. And cool things about this, uh, so the processor, I believe, is a 2.9 gigahertz CPU. Uh, can boost up, it's a quad core. Uh, there is a slot, so there's a, the SSD is on the internal M.2, I believe it's a 2230 or 2242, one of those. Uh, that's the size of the SSD, um, like the physical size in millimeters. Uh, and it also has a full-size SATA port, so you can have a secondary drive. You could stick a mechanical if you want to, or another SSD, but definitely you can stick like a full-size 2.5-inch hard drive in addition to the internal SSD. That is awesome. So we have the accessory box, obviously, on this side here. This is undoubtedly going to contain the power brick. And it's one of these short wire ones. Uh, let's just see how short this is. Uh, given you can use a power strip, of course, but uh, this is about five feet long. I mean, it'll work physically, of course, but yeah, I would have liked to see a little bit longer of a power cord. Uh, yeah, five feet's just a little bit short, but uh, yeah, like I said, you could just stick an extension cord on this or whatever. Uh, it did say, yeah, 12 volts, uh, 3 amps, and yeah, it's, it's, a, uh, <laughs> it's a power brick, <laughs> that's all I can say. Feels a little hollow, not the lightest power brick that I've ever held, but yeah, I don't know. I might <laughs> replace this with something a little bit beefier, uh, just in case. What else do we get? We get an HDMI cable. Also pretty short, it's about like three feet, maybe two and a half, three feet. Not particularly long. Eh, I have a drawer full of HDMI cables, it's not that big of a deal. There's a, what appears to be a mounting bracket of some sort. So I guess you could like mount this on, on a wall or something. We'll have to see, hopefully this has a Visa mount so you could mount on the back of the uh, a monitor. There is a Phillips screwdriver and a Phillips screw in there too. And that is it for that side. We have a protective foam piece. We have the user manual. And 
Yeah, so the hard driver compatibility, let's just, there you go. Hard driver compatibility, uh, it only supports B key, which tells me that that is a MSATA SSD. So it's not gonna support NVMEs, which are the most widely available, the highest capacity. Yeah, so you're gonna have to opt for kind of a slower, older M.2 SSD, which is kind of unfortunate. I guess it, that that's a tip off, the fact that it, it's, um, it uses a, a secondary SATA drive. It's probably using like a similar SATA controller for the main SSD. And it is a 2242, so I was right on that. It is SATA 3.0, so there's that, which is what, six gigs per second or something like that, theoretical. And you have all the ports listed here, how to install the 2.5 inch SATA hard disk. And luckily on this model, it looks like they put the, the secondary full size SATA drive on the bottom as opposed to the top. The Camry had it on the top, which meant that when heat rised, it cooked that drive. Uh, that was one of the things I, I noted in the review that the, the, the drive got a little bit too warm and I started getting a little bit worried about it. Uh, this shouldn't have that problem because it's sitting on the bottom there, unless if you flip the computer upside down, which why would you do that? Anyway, uh, da, 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 French, other languages. Yeah, that's about it. It does give me a warning. It says, do not disconnect computer during first booting. So it's probably doing something important when it first initializes. So yeah, I'm going to have to make sure that it doesn't, you know, brick itself or anything like that. So it says five to 10 minutes uh, the first time you boot it while it configures itself. If you accidentally disconnect, uh, it can cause irreversible damage to the Windows installation. And all that means is you'd have to reinstall Windows from like a USB, a bootable USB drive, which I'm capable of doing, but let's try not to screw this up. <laughs> uh, Windows normal booting only takes about 20 seconds after the first time, so that's pretty good. Uh, we have a cardboard sleeve and that's it in this case. Let's just set this aside. The computer itself, ooh, ah. <laughs> uh, it is nice, cool metal. Yeah, so the side feels like extruded aluminum. Maybe machine? No, probably extruded. Yeah, it feels nice. Like nice and cool, nice metal power button, nice and clicky, power indicator. We have, I mean, there's a protective sheet on it. Uh, should I peel this off? No, we'll leave it on. Nah, okay, ASMR time. We're going to peel this guy off. Yeah, that was pretty satisfying. Okay. This is as clean as it will ever look. Feels like it's plastic. Yeah, it's definitely. No, is it? Is it glass? Might be glass. <laughs> I did the tooth test. Yeah, I think this is. If it's plastic, it's a very high quality plastic. If it's glass, it definitely feels like glass because it's cold. And it's already picking up fingerprints. Great, as I keep rubbing it. Yeah, it looked fantastic when I first took it out, but uh, yeah, it's gonna get dusty. It's gonna get fingerprinty. That's just the way it works. Yeah, that feels like glass, actually. Really good construction on this. Feels real solid. We have a micro SD card slot, a ventilation hole, four uh, USB 3 ports. That's really good to see. Uh, three HDMI cables. These This can do three monitors at the same time. So that is fantastic. We have a headphone jack output for audio. We have dual, uh, I believe this is gigabit um, like ethernet. So we have two ports, which is rather interesting. So we can do some neat things. Like for instance, of course, the first port will just be for internet. And then we could network it through the second port to, I don't know, like a local device, uh, like a NAS or something like that and daisy chain them. That's interesting. Here's the uh, AC input, and it's just a barrel jack, as you can see. And yeah, the case, ah, that's why this bracket came with. It does not have a visa mount. Uh, they expect you to use this bracket somehow. <laughs> uh, probably this wouldn't be that difficult to uh, design a, a 3D printed visa mount and just tap into these screws here. There are threaded mounts here, uh, none on this side, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see here, it does say 16 gigs plus 512. Plastic bottom, rubber feet surrounding uh, the screws. 
I kind of want to pop this open real quick and take a real quick look around. They give you a screwdriver, so they're just asking for it. Okay, the back plate, plenty of holes. This is where the hard drive mounts. You can see it has uh, multiple screw positions, so okay, fair enough. I'll probably end up sticking a second SSD in there. You can see there is a heat sink. Interestingly enough, there's uh, some like thermal silicone. Yeah, looks like it's uh, cured. So that is sticking onto the SSD, so I can't unfortunately see the face of the SSD. Uh, might have a label on the bottom side though. Okay, yeah, it does have a label on the bottom side. It's just generically labeled M.2 2242 512 gigabytes. Okay, fair enough. I don't see a branding on it or anything. So that is in there again. We have the Wi-Fi. Uh, has the antennas. Okay, they are like the mini connectors, but a uh, hot glue, a little hot snot there to secure the antennas for the Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, you shouldn't really ever need to pull this out, so whatever. And I can just about see it is a Intel 7... Ah, God, it's so small. Uh, here, I have to see with my eyes, bare eyes. It's an Intel model number 7265NGW. It is a dual band uh, wireless AC uh, Wi-Fi chip. So, yeah, should give you at least better... Uh, speeds. Yeah, you can kind of see this does look like it is machined. Uh, yeah, you can see the screw mounts. That's an interesting way of doing it. Uh, we can see all the vertical ports on there. This heat sink is going to be, yeah, that's the exhaust port. Intake is from the bottom, it looks like, all those holes. And we have a centrifugal little uh, fan there in order to suck in air and blow it out the side there. And they used a piece of metal here, uh, tapped into the, the heat sink, which is undoubtedly anodized aluminum, just to direct the, uh, the air path horizontal so it doesn't escape out the uh, same side. We do have the SATA cable right here, and it's just sort of tucked in there. Eh, I don't know how I feel about that. That's a bit how you doing. Uh, probably would have been best to unplug that and put it in the bag here. If the person doesn't want to use SATA, then it's not in the way. Uh, depending on how this is installed, if they're not careful, it could be like obstructing the fan. I'm sure they hopefully do QC testing for this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, just in case. They're interesting. Okay, the LED for the power indicator looks like actually a white LED. Uh, it's mounted facing downwards, but I guess it, there's, it lights up enough area to go through the hole in the front. That's interesting. We have the power button here. Uh, we have the ribbon for the fan. Any like secret ports? Like the, um, the Camry, there was like a secret USB-C port and a secret micro SD card slot in there. I don't see anything like that here. I have a feeling there's almost nothing on the top here. Probably just the antennas for the uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't see any like second boards or anything and doesn't look like there's any secret secret ports or anything. We can see here under these stickers are actually like the EMI um, sort of filter components for the Ethernet ports. And yeah, unfortunately, I know I'm going to get this question. The RAM is hard soldered to here. So whatever you get is whatever you get. Uh, so yeah. Okay, so I got the heat sink off, the fan off. Uh, the application of thermal paste, uh, I would have liked to see maybe a little more. It's not fully covering the dye, so before I put this back together, I'm going to apply more thermal paste. Uh, not necessarily like a lot, but just to cover up, make sure. Because uh, it's actually, I could just scrape very carefully because these are like really small surface mount capacitors. Just take some of the thermal paste that's in between, that's not even on the dies, and just uh, take a Q-tip and just, you know, smudge it around to make sure that it fully covers, because that, that'll definitely affect the uh, thermal efficiency of this. Um, I, like Exactly like I guess, there's two uh, RAM chips there. There's uh, enough for two more, so I guess you could get up to 32 gigs of RAM. Um, I'm still not seeing the CMOS battery. How, maybe this, could this not have a CMOS battery? That's really weird. Um, I guess I need to fully take this apart to see because um, 
there has to be a CMOS battery. And if you have to take apart the entire unit to change it, that's not good. Uh, but yeah, let me see if I can get deeper inside here. Okay, so I am getting somewhere. Uh, the antennas are still gonna be plugged in, right? Uh, yeah, so, oop, power button fell out. <laughs> Everything's machined metal. That's really nice, actually. Anodized machined. Anyway, here's the LEDs for the uh, the backlit logo. And it looks like there, there's, I guess, a constant current driver chip there. Uh, that's interesting. Ah, geez, they stuck the, uh, the BIOS battery on the bottom. So, yeah, you have to pretty much take apart the entire computer to, uh, to gain access. Uh, just to change the BIOS battery. Uh, I'm not too happy about that. Uh, the antennas just go underneath and they just sit sort of towards here, right underneath the glass and the plastic frame there. But yeah, uh, I'm not happy about the uh, having to disassemble everything. By the way, uh, if I haven't said this, which I don't think I did yet, um, it's not advised to <laughs> take stuff like this apart if you don't know what you're doing. And obviously, Doing this will void, um, will possibly void any warranties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Legally is out of the way. And uh, I say we do some retro emulation. I think that's a pretty good test for these little computers. So let me get set up for that. And so yeah, here's the unit itself. While it's turned on, it has a very nice like backlit logo. This is all glass. This is all metal. The only thing plastic is the very bottom, and obviously little rubber feet. Uh, yeah, a build quality, absolutely nothing to worry about. The only thing is it does seem to get, like, when it's at full tilt, um, using, like, most of the processor, it does tend to get pretty toasty. Um, that's probably because it's transmitting, you know, the metal is, uh, conducting a lot of the heat away, and the glass as well on top, uh, seems to be. But yeah, I've had this running for about an hour. It's not, like, super hot to the touch, but it's definitely, you can feel it's, it's decently, um, pretty toasty but yeah okay so here we go I am set up right now I'm using one of these um, these wireless keypad thingies uh, to actually move the mouse because I'm set up on the floor I don't really have a desk set up right now that I could have this permanently going but anyway this is just for testing uh, you can see we are running Windows 11 uh, this is actually a couple weeks after I received this, and there were, it wasn't as smooth as a setup as I would have liked. I have it set up here, it's just sitting on its side because it's on carpet, so I don't want to obstruct the uh, the vents on the bottom there, uh, because it will cook itself um, if you do that. So, on a desk it won't be a problem, but on rug, yeah, probably not a great idea to set it flat down on it. Anyway, I had some issues getting this set up, and... Uh, to, to uh, DreamQuest's credit, they actually did provide pretty good support for me. I never felt like um, they were trying to just ignore me or not provide any kind of customer support. They are actually very good with it. Uh, they help, helped set me through because when I first plugged this in, there was a warning when you first receive it that the first time you plug it in, they said something to the effect of, like, don't unplug it because it's setting itself up and you can mess it up. Basically, you can break it. And I don't know why. So I plugged it in and it gave me a blue screen <laughs> the first time. I swear I didn't mess anything up. I didn't unplug it. I didn't do anything that I shouldn't have done. First time I plugged it in, hit the power button, it blue screened. And it gave me some kind of error. I forget exactly. Took a picture of it. I, um, I sent it over to uh, their support and they got back to me and then they, they walked me through how to to basically reset Windows 11. So I was able to finally get into this. There is another problem. And they said that if I if I wanted to, they could help me uh, get this reset up. So they, in order to test these at the factory, they create like a test account uh, on the computer and then run a bunch of automated tests. And once it passes it, I think they're supposed to like wipe them and reset them so that when you set them up, you set them up from scratch, basically. I think there was something wrong with my unit. Maybe it passed all their tests, but um, from the sounds of what uh, from their engineer was saying, something to the effect of they tested the unit, but they didn't wipe the test account. So if I go into uh, here, um, 
you can see right here it says if I, if I zoomed in you could actually see here we go so you can see here it says user uh, default user zero local account I did not create that it's password locked and I don't know the password because I didn't create it so I have no way of changing any major settings with this uh, until I basically wipe the computer and do a fresh install of Windows 11, which they were willing to help me through and figure out how to do that. Yeah, this is sort of, mm, I mean, I don't want to blame them directly, but <laughs> they sort of are. Uh, when you give like a review, a review unit to someone, you kind of want to make sure that it's, it's in a good, like, standing good software standing so that the person can actually use it i'm gonna tilt my monitor down just a bit and yeah so i haven't already haven't had such a great experience and and here's the thing like if if a reviewer receives a unit like this it's not impossible that a normal person a paying customer will receive a unit like this so i passed along a suggestion you know just make sure you check these a little bit better because i wasn't too happy um I don't know the exact cost of this. I think it's somewhere around the neighborhood of like 200-ish. If I had put down hypothetically 200 bucks for this, I wouldn't have been happy having to spend an additional like hour of my time basically resetting everything so I could actually use a computer. Okay, let's just get that all out of the way. Um, we can go over specs right now. Uh, this is called the DreamQuest Pro. It has a Celeron N5105, which is a quad core two gigahertz CPU. Uh, my model in particular has 16 gigs of RAM, which is actually more than in this price range of these like mini PCs. That's usually more than you, you'll get normally. It does come with Windows 11 Pro, so that is good at least. So yeah, like I said, unfortunately, some of these settings I, I cannot change um, without... I'd, I'd have to fully reinstall Windows 11. And I've already set up all the games I want to test and stuff, and so I'm not going to do that. That'll take me like another month to get everything set up and get ready to make the video and whatnot. And I added, because it does have a slot for a full-size SATA drive, I've added a, um, I forget the brand. I got it cheap from Newegg. It was like 20 bucks for a 512 gig SSD. And here you can see it's showing up as the E drive. I, I'm just using this as a secondary drive so I can put more stuff on it without, you know, tying up the C drive. Anyway, uh, you can see here I've I've actually started uh, playing around. So I guess I set up my uh, my PS2 emulator and whatnot, and I'm going to disable audio because I don't want to even mess with copyright kind of stuff. I have a PS4 controller plugged in over USB and uh, tank controls. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. Uh, yeah. So. Eh. Let's just let's just pick up stuff. It's a map. Give us a map. Insert door of the explorer joke here. Uh, let's just see. So yeah, I am playing. Let's just zoom out a bit. I'm playing uh, Silent Hill 2. It's a PS2 game, and I'm emulating it. And I, I believe it's only it's emulating at 640. Uh, by 480, so not like super high resolution. There we go. Okay, so now I'm running around. You can see I am using about 65%. Just running in circles. Not really doing much of anything right now. But uh, yeah, you can see 2.73 gigahertz, 71% CPU. I'm only using about 4 gigs of RAM, which really isn't much. Let's just go down here. And we're using 17% of the um, the integrated graphics, which I think is uh, UHD, it's the Intel UHD graphics. Um, it's saying it jumped up to about 44% now. I'm guessing because of the fog effect in the game. But uh, to the touch, I've been running this for like half an hour. It's uh, it's a little bit warm, uh, but it's not like super hot. It's made of glass and metal. So that definitely helps with the uh, heat dissipation there. Yeah, I'm not noticing like any major stuttering or anything. Let's uh, fire up a different game. Okay, so just booted up uh, Final Fantasy 12. 
yeah, like the FMV runs just fine, not noticing any stuttering. Uh, about 40% CPU, 17% GPU. Okay, here we are finally up to, I had to skip through a lot of the intro. We're up to uh, the first cutscene in the game. And we're sitting about 50, now just jumped up to 70% CPU, 52% GPU. And uh, yeah, I mean, the game looks great. Um, there's no stuttering, not even a hint of, of any kind of uh, frame skip, nothing like that. The mouse out of the way there. And yeah. Uh, let's get into some gameplay. Uh, hopefully I bound this controller correctly. I, I know when I last was testing that other uh, mini PC, uh, there was something weird going on with the way that I was I was using a uh, one of these keyboard controllers and the camera kept spinning around, oddly enough. So hopefully that doesn't happen this time. Okay, so we're finally at a point that I can do something. Uh, okay, the camera's not spinning, and it looks like uh, the analog stick is working. <laughs> so good. And the other one works, and good. Yes, yes, good enough. Let me get into like a battle or something. Okay, let's get to it. Now we're about 75, 77% CPU. Uh, GPU jumped up to like 67%. I can already tell this is a little bit smoother than that other um, desktop mini PC that I reviewed. Then again, it looks like, well, this definitely has more RAM and it looks like the CPU is uh, is quite a bit better than that one. So I would expect this to run smoothly. Okay. What am I? There we go. There we go. Oh. Okay. So yeah, it seems, at least for PS2 emulation, um, it seems to idle around like 60 to 70% CPU and about 50% GPU, so. The temperature on the unit itself, it seems to have gotten a little bit hotter. Okay, and that seems to be running fine. I mean, I guess I'll obliterate these guys because why not? And there we go. So yeah, uh, I wanted to try something else different too. Okay, so let's exit out of this. PS2 emulation runs perfectly fine. I wanted to put to really push this. Let's try PS3 emulation. Uh, that's way outside of what this little guy can do. Uh, no, I don't want to update right now, uh, but let's just fire up uh, Persona 5. Uh, this might take a little while um, because it has to do all the shader rendering and whatnot, but I'll get back to you guys once it's uh, fired up. Okay, so that actually the first time took far longer. I think it re-rendered everything but uh now it just had to pretty much just like load all the uh, shaders and whatnot but uh yeah i have this hooked up once again to the dualshock 4 controller it was actually a preset setting in here that i didn't have to manually keybind so that's great uh it looks like it is running this is the cutscene guy it is a little jittery i've just noticed uh can i yeah Let's uh, half screen this and task manager, and it is maxed out. The CPU 100%, uh, GPU is only about 40%. It's running a little, consuming a little more RAM. It's uh, about 6.9 gigs right now. 
and the cutscene is running. Um, I am doing video and audio. Uh, I don't have the audio playing because of copyright reasons, but um, if you did listen to the audio while it's playing, it would be choppy. Uh, definitely, this machine is just about not capable of emulating PS3, at least at its the current emulator um, that I'm using right now. Let's uh, just skip through this and I started a game so we can uh, sort of look to see what's what's happening with that. I will say though, the fact that this runs at all on this tiny little PC is impressive. And at least the UI parts are pretty smooth. Uh, it gets a little rougher when you actually get into the game. But yeah, uh, RAM usage jumped to 7.4 gigs. Uh, we're now using about 70% of the GPU. And uh, we are in game now, you can see. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you wanted to, you could play certain games, like less demanding PS3 games. Um, it is definitely a little bit choppy though. we go yeah I mean I am impressed that this runs at all um, my laptop which is a quad core i7 like I think it's maybe eighth gen so it's not like a slouch uh, it's a pretty decent laptop it's a Dell XPS 13 that has trouble running um, PS3 emulation and it's maybe only marginally better than this machine and this machine costs probably a fraction of that that's like a $1,800 laptop, maybe. Um, maybe about two grand ish when I bought it. So the fact that a machine that's around the price point of 200 bucks can even remotely run, uh, I think he asked us to put the sign over for him or something. Maybe. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll see it pop up, say it's compiling shaders, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I think we're good to go, so I can just go back upstairs. And for good measure, let's just save. So yeah, this is like almost borderline playable. Now, given Persona 5 on PS3 isn't the most graphically intense game, the fact that it runs at all. But then again, we are maxing out the CPU. Now we're almost up to like eight gigs of RAM, but we have 16 to play with. Uh, GPUs oscillating around like 70, 80%. So, eh, uh, but it does, it does actually run. And one last thing, this was still open. There we go. I installed Evil Within 2, and this is a PC game, native PC. So let's just see if this runs, how this runs. But there we go. So, might not be able to see. I don't know if I can unfull screen this. Okay, it looks like it does natively work with the DualShock 4. Yes. Let's just start a game. It is a little bit. It's getting a little bit choppy now. Uh, is there a way I can... Yeah, this guy's now getting... I'm not worried about the heat, but definitely getting hotter. And this game is <laughs> chucking along. Wow. Is there a way I can... Want to see the task manager? Uh, so I mean, it looks like it's maxing out the GPU. It's like almost a hundred percent. The CPU is only idling, you know, sitting around like twenty percent. So it looks like this is a very GPU intensive game, and obviously this is running at um, running on the internal integrated graphics, so it's not going to be great. Looks like we're loading. I'm playing, 
break the game by exiting out just to see what the uh, task manager said. Okay, there we go. So let me get into the actual game and uh, get past all this cutscene crap. Okay, so here we are finally in game. This is not playable. <laughs> I didn't really expect it to be. Um, I mean, I don't know if you'd consider this a AAA game. So, yeah. I wouldn't have really expected it. But, I mean, the fact that the integrated graphics run this at all is... I'm kind of impressed by that. Maybe you aren't, but I'm just used to, like, nothing running on integrated graphics. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, let's see, how do I... There we go. Yep, yep. Exit to desktop. So there we go. <laughs> okay, so yeah, there you go. Uh, she's toasty now. Um, actually, interestingly enough, PS3 emulation ran way better than I thought, but still not really what I'd consider playable. PS2 emulation and below runs fantastic. Uh, thermal, I think really honestly what's keeping uh, this system back is the thermals of the actual unit itself. Maybe it's just sort of too small of an area. The fan, I will say, for the most part, like right now it's idling. The fan is on. Uh, I can feel it blowing a little bit of, of warm air out, but it's actually really, really quiet for, for what it is. This would be probably better suited than gaming unless if you're doing like kind of old school 2d gaming this is probably better suited as like a multimedia pc to sit underneath your tv uh, because the fan the, at least the profile it does stay very quiet like 99 percent of the time until you start using that cpu and gpu more and then it'll ramp up but this um this computer runs way quieter than all the other uh, desktop mini sort of nook style pcs i've tested in the past and overall, just, yeah, I really like the design of it. Um, I did test the micro SD card slot. It works just fine. I'm a little bit questioning. It's like right above the exhaust, so it does get kind of warm. I am a little worried. I wouldn't leave a card in there. You might cook it. <laughs> uh, I actually really like this in the vertical position. Um, like I said, if you're going to have it horizontal, just have it on like a flat wooden surface, not a rug. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Really small form factor. It looks really slick. I really like that. And uh, of course, it's doing a Windows update. <laughs> it's Windows. Uh, anyway, um, I just wanted to summarize basically. Uh, hardware quality, the build quality seems very good. Uh, there are some nitpicks I have, like I mentioned, on the inside, things that I think they can improve. But I, I think like the base hardware quality is actually really good. So I'm happy with that. Um, feels like you got what you paid for in terms of you know, the actual hardware as well as the specs. Um, uh, performance, it's it's a tiny little nook. Um, this will be perfectly fine just using as like a, a kind of office desktop computer. You can do a little bit of gaming on it, but don't expect running like AAA games, modern AAA games. Uh, emulation actually runs really well for like PS2 and below, and I was actually really surprised by the performance of PS3 emulation on this. I uh, I haven't tried anything like Yuzu for um for Switch emulation and whatnot. I, I I suspect that that might be an issue, but I think GameCube, PS2, pretty much everything below that is going to run just fine. There were some hiccups with uh, I guess this would be considered um, quality control. Um, releasing a unit like this with whatever software problem that I had when I first plugged it in that bricked that like gave me a blue screen of death. They need to make sure that they have that under control so that other customers don't have to deal with that. Um, you should just get it, plug it in, and it works. That might be the majority of cases are like that, but when I got it, I had to go through, it was like about an hour's work to get it fully running um, to the point where I could boot to the desktop and actually install stuff and do stuff. And the fact that it still isn't quite there because I can't 
delete the, the user account that they created, like the admin account. I don't have the login. They don't even know what the login is. So I don't know, or maybe they do know, but they don't want to give it to me, whatever. Um, so to really fully use this, I'm going to need at least one more hour to fully wipe Windows and reinstall everything that I installed on here, which is a pain in the butt. I'm not going to do that in this video, but yeah. Anyway, um, overall, uh, hardware, I would give like an 8 out of 10. Software, I would have to give like a 5 out of 10. So under normal conditions, it would be higher. But I think because of like the software problems that I faced, I would have to give it like the software user experience of me setting this up a 5 out of 10. That may not be your case when you order yours, but it certainly was when I when I got mine. So anyway, so yeah, overall, I'm mostly impressed by this in terms of like its performance, its size, uh, the build quality. It's just they need to do better on the software aspect of it. So anyway, yeah, uh, once again, huge thanks for DreamQuest for sending this in. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.